this is David. Today I'm going to show you how to create a, a chat bot completely within the Azure portal. It will use the Microsoft Bot Framework, but we don't have to open up Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code unless we want to. Now, I've already navigated to the Azure portal and signed in. Of course, I have an Azure account. And here I'm going to click this big green plus button, create a resource. And my resource happens to be under the AI and machine learning category, and it's called Web App Bot. That brings up this blade right here. I'm going to call, I'm going to create, give it a name. I'll refer to this sometimes in code, so I'll give it, a, it has to be a unique name. DG test, uh, how about WAB for Web App Bot. And then my resource group, I'm going to store it in. I'll create a brand new one for this. I'll call it DG test WABRG. Uh, East US is a location, pricing tier, this refers to, if I want to look at the details of this, you can see them here. This is how many messages my bot can uh, accept. The free one accepts fewer messages. I'll take the premium one right here. Um, and then I'll give it an, a name, and this also has to be unique. This is actually exposed out to the internet as a web service. So it'll be dgtestwab.azurewebsites.net, preceded by HTTPS, of course. Um, and so this um, this is how applications will actually access this bot. It's a simple web service. Um, I've got a, there are a few built-in templates here. There's the Echo Bot, and which is simply the user sends in a message, it sends the same message back to you. There's a basic bot, there's a little bit of uh, natural language processing. There's some other things here that are built outside of the browser, but I'm going to pick the simplest one, the Echo Bot here. And you notice that we have an option of, of doing it in. Uh, either Node.js, which is JavaScript, or C Sharp, and which version of the bot framework that we want to use. I'll select Echo Bot here, and down here I'll create an app service plan. This defines the size of the machine, and also the location of that machine. I'll put that also in East US, so I'll select that right here, and Application Insights on is fine. Uh, I'll keep that in US. If I want to, it will generate a username and password, but if I want to have control over that, I can set that in the next one. Now I'll click Create here. It takes just a couple of minutes for this thing to validate and then to begin creating, but I won't make you wait around for that. I'm going to pause the video now and come back when it's done. It's been a couple of minutes and our bot is created, so I'll click Go to Resource here and bring it up. And you see we have a few options here. One of which is test. We could test this right inside the browser here. I could click that button or else over here on the left is a list of options and one of them is test in web chat. Let's wait for it to be ready. And what it is, it brings up this dialog right here. Down here is a message. I can type a message, it'll send it to the bot and I'll get a response back. Remember this is the echo bot, so I say hello and press enter then I get a response back here. Hello is my response sending. And then uh, event detected, you sent hello. Goodbye, enter, you sent goodbye. It just simply echoes back. It's a very simple bot. Of course, this is a very simple bot. You probably want to make some changes to it. And there are a few ways to do that. If I click on the Build tab over here. You notice this link down at the bottom. Open online code editor. What that'll do is it actually opens up a new tab, and it loads up all the files in this .NET project, and allows you to edit these, including this README file right here, right within the browser. Most of the logic of this particular bot is here in the echo with counterbot.cs file. If you look down here in the on turn async, you'll notice that here's where turn and then some sequential number you sent and then the text this is what came in here so I could come in here and I could modify this and it automatically saves it up here you don't even have to hit save and you can work with it that way um, this is a little bit limiting but it's great for making really quick and dirty changes to your file if you really want to work with it I would recommend using a tool like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code and that's available to you as well here we can click on download bot source code right here and it will actually generate a zip file that you can download and then unzip, save it on your local computer and open up in Visual Studio. Now I've already done that. I have right 
here the file that was downloaded and zipped from it. And it looks, it, you can notice that it's actually, here's the echo with counterbot.cs file. You see that same line right here, and I can type that, you know, you typed instead of you sent. And that's all fine. This won't work quite out of the box. We do need to make a change to it. Here in our app settings.json, there are a couple of keys right here, keys that you don't want to check in a source code. So you probably want to mark those as maybe git ignore if it's git uh, source code. Um, but in here, you're going to put some keys to replace this descriptive string right here. And we get these keys, it says it right here, in the Azure App Services application settings. Where can we find these settings? Well, they're right here, Azure App Service application settings. And those are, of course, right inside the portal. If we go down here to application settings, then we are looking for the bot file path and the bot file suite right here under application settings. And if I click on them, then it displays them right here. I can grab that and copy the bot file path, go back to my code here and replace this dummy text with that value. Same thing with bot file secret. I'll grab that, copy it, and paste it into the value of the bot file secret and save that. Now I can run this bot. And when I run it, it's just a web service, so there's, um, there's they, they've added this dummy launch landing page right here, but this really doesn't show you the bot in action. You've really got to call this web service to see it in action. The next thing we want to do is to test this bot bot by calling that web service. Uh, and we could write code to do that or we could deploy it out somewhere. Uh, but really there's a much simpler way is we can use something called the Microsoft bot emulator. And if I go to whatever my favorite search engine is, then I could type in bot framework emulator right there and the very first thing is that here's it's a github repository it's it's all open source you can look at the source code if you want to but you really don't need the source code go down here to download and click on github releases page and underneath there there's actually a, a setup you can run download that and run it and it'll install a desktop app onto your machine which i have done and I will launch it right now. Here it is. Here's my desktop application, the Bot Framework Emulator. I can open a bot. And what I mean by opening a bot is I will open up this dgtestwebapp.bot file. It's, a, it's filtered to a .bot file. So the one that's associated with this particular project. Click on Choose File. This is a JSON file. I'll actually show it to you here. There it is right there. It's got information about endpoints for the development environment and an end, if you want to test locally, an endpoint for the production environment if you want to deploy this out to the cloud and see what's out there or deploy your change out to the cloud. It's already there. Um, and you can see there's development and there's production. It's, it's, all, it's all in here. So if I want to use this, I first have to run the application if I want to test it locally. There it is, and then I come back to the emulator, and then I can type in things like, hello, and it sent it, and it says, you typed hello, and there's the change that I made. You typed hello instead of you sent hello, and if I say goodbye, right there. And now this is my project. I can do with it what I want, and when I'm done, I can deploy it either with a right-click deploy or with deploying out to, uh, or getting into source code, deploying through continuous integration, how, however I would normally do this. So in this video, I've shown you how to go into the Azure portal and create a new Microsoft bot application directly from within the portal and modify it outside of that portal if you want to or inside of the browser if you want to do that. This is David. Thank you for watching.